Well, hello, folks, and welcome back. Well, this week I thought I'd share with you a really cool design tip that I came across in a magazine. And funny enough, it was the Sky Mall magazine. I was on the plane coming back from Vegas from Photoshop World, sifting through the magazine, and I know we're all guilty of it, looking at the really cheesy stuff and sometimes some cool stuff in there. But there was an ad, I believe it was for a watch company, that had a really, really cool kind of a grid, distorted grid background. I'm thinking, that's really cool. I want to figure out how to do that. Well, I remember in Illustrator not too long ago, somebody showed me a function that was really cool, and I thought, yeah, that's a cool effect, but when would I ever use that? Well, looking at that ad, I'm, and then it hit me. I was like, that is the perfect use for that particular function. So here's what we're going to do. I'm inside Illustrator, but we're going to ultimately bring this in Photoshop to finish it up. But we have to generate this quick effect inside Illustrator first. So I'm going to go and select my Ellipse Shape tool here. And I'm just going to go inside my artboard and draw the shape across the artboard, just like that. And I'm not drawing it out. I'm just keeping it very narrow and across like this. Now, here's the trick. I'm going to hold down the tilde key, which is that little wavy line key next to the number one on your keyboard, right above the tab key. And when I do that, it's going to basically do a repeat of my shape as I'm drawing it or as I'm you know, moving it across my document. So I'm going to hold that key down and just drag the shape down and across. And you can see it, it has generated, if I deselect it here, a really interesting grid pattern. You can see all the lines that are going on in here. It's basically repeated that shape as I drag along. So when I first saw this, I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. But you know, you look at it and you go, all right, what do I do with it now? Here's what you do with it. I'm going to drag and select the entire object. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Let's go under Edit, go to Copy. And we're going to minimize that window. And now we're going to go into Photoshop. Here I have a document. If I'll go under Image, Image Size, you can see it's a small, it's a 10 by 7 inch at 75 dpi. Now this is, of course, for the sake of demonstration. If you're working in print or anything like that, you certainly will want to work in a much higher resolution file. But here's what I have here. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to press, actually go into the edit menu, and we're going to go to Paste. And I'm simply going to paste this as pixels. So with pixel selected, I'm just going to click OK. It brings in that shape. Now I'm not going to commit it just yet. I'm actually going to rotate it and just kind of put it in a general position right about like that. Then I'm going to press enter. That will commit it into this document. I'll zoom back in. So now it was filled with black as you remember inside Illustrator and that brought it over here. So I need to make it a little bit more visible. I'm going to lock the transparency and I'm going to go into my color picker and select a really light blue color. Let's go into the light blue. Let's get it really light up there. I'm going to hit OK. So that light blue is in my foreground. And with the transparency locked, I'm simply going to press Option Delete. That would be Alt Backspace on a PC to fill that grid in there. And that looks pretty good. It's kind of got an interesting shape to it. It looks pretty neat. Well, let's go and take it a little bit further. Well, I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. And I'm going to go in here and let's bring this color back to white. Well, let's bring it back to the default colors. I'm just going to press the letter D and then hit the X key to bring white to the foreground. I'm going to select my gradient tool and we're going to choose the second gradient which is the radial gradient and we want to make sure we're going from the foreground to a transparent color which is the second icon right here. And then we'll hit OK. And just right down here toward the bottom of the document, I'm just, on that new layer, not on the grid layer which is on that layer one, on the blank layer it's going to draw a gradient out just like that. Now I'm going to clip that inside that grid layer by just clipping it between them. I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key and clip that layer in between there. So now it appears just inside the grid. I'm going to change the blend mode of that to Overlay. Then it highlights that area at the bottom a little bit more. As you see, I move it around. It's a little bit, a little bit changed. Well, I'm going to highlight that grid layer once more. I'm going to zoom out the document so I can get see what I'm doing here. I'm going to bring up Free Transform by pressing Command or Control T. Then I'm going to go control or right click directly on that object to bring up this menu and we're going to go to warp. And here you can just kind of do whatever you want. I'm just going to actually just kind of push these ends in all kind of weird directions and just manipulate that grid that much more. Now that gradient layer we created is staying put because it's clipped inside there. It's on its own layer so it's not doing anything. So once I've worked all that in place we'll just hit OK and then we'll zoom back in here. So we're getting a kind of really interesting 3D grid thing happening here. It's kind of cool. And ultimately what we're striving for here is a really interesting background. Well, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to 
create a layer mask on that layer and just kind of mask some areas away. Let's so, select our gradient tool once again. I'm going to press the D key to bring back those default colors. And I want to bring black to the foreground, so I'm going to hit the X key once again. And again, as we did before, going from black to transparent using the radial gradient, I'm just going to draw a gradient in different parts on that layer mask. So I'm just going to draw here, let's draw one over here, just kind of giving those edges as if they're receding back into empty space in a sense. Let's just kind of do that there, just like that. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go over here and select that background and let's go and get another of that blue color. And let's give that background a little subtle hint of blue. Again, using the gradient tool, foreground the transparent, using the radial, I'm just going to draw a gradient in from the back here up just like that. So it almost looks like there's a light source coming from down here. It's shining up on that grid. Well, all there's really left to do now is just pop in some text. Here, I'm going to select my text tool. I'm just going to click in here once. And let's go with, well, let's go with CS3. Big techno letter CS3. So, and, and this font is actually, if I double click and highlight that font, you can see it's Terminator which is from the movie Terminator. I actually found this font on that on a website called DaFont. It's D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. has all kinds of really cool free fonts you can download. So I'm just going to park that in place there. I'm going to go under Window to Styles. I'm going to open up my Styles. I'm just going to apply one of these default styles in here, which is this little chromy gel effect there, and boom, there we have it. And that pretty much is it. Look at that. We've created a really cool three-dimensional grid simply with that really crazy function inside Illustrator that probably nobody ever thought to use, but here is a really cool use for it, creating a really interesting three-dimensional grid in there. So there you have it. Give it a try yourself. See what kind of funky designs you can come up with and uh, have fun with it. We'll see you next time.